Hello everyone. Welcome to the video series on interesting topics of modern C++ and in this particular video we will talk about tuples and we will also come to know why we now call tuples as new classes. So what are std tuples? Of course it is available from C++ 11 onwards. Tuples are nothing but fixed size collection of heterogeneous elements. In that sense, they are very similar to user-defined types for which we create structures and classes. For example, let's talk about a simple structure in C or C++. This structure has an int, char and float. So basically, we have created a user-defined type with an int, char and float. So if we want to do the same thing with tuples, here is how we can do that. We can create a tuple with int, char and float and then we can create tuple in three ways. One by using constructor, another by using initialization list and last by using the function standard template library function called make tuple. As you can see that we can create tuples which contains integer, character and float and in that sense it is very similar to the user defined type we create using structures and classes. Now the question comes, why should we use tuples? Well, tuples are not a replacement of the object in object-oriented programming. Of course, a proper object will have its own characteristics and behavior which we can do in tuples. But you know what, tuples can be used for creating user-defined types for things like bookkeeping objects, for keeping state information, for transferring objects from one place to another, one thread to another. You know, the smaller objects which doesn't need a sophisticated object paradigm. For those objects, you can use tuples instead of classes. So now let's go ahead and see the code. In the code, we will see the following, how to uh, identify tuple elements and size, accessing data, what std type does, we will talk about C++ 17 structural binding with tuples. We will talk about lambdas and tuples. And at the end, we will also see how we can use tuples with containers. The idea of showing all those things to you is to make sure that you understand why I am saying tuples are new classes. So let's go ahead and see the code. Now this is how we have defined our tuple as I have shown you in my presentation. This was my structure with a user defined type which has int char float and I am getting rid of it because I don't need it. And I have created a tuple over here with int char float and I am having a t1, t2 and t3. For using tuple you have to include this particular header tuple. Okay. Now, when you define user defined types like structures or classes, is it possible for you to know how many elements are there in that structure or classes? The answer is no. You can get to know the overall size of the object, but you will not be able to know individual elements in that particular structure or class. This we can do in tuples. Here is how. So we can use a tuple helper function called uh, tuple size will pass the tuple which is tp and will say value and if you go ahead and run this code you can see that it will come at 3 oh it just went down 3 the size is 3 number of elements in the tuple is 3 this is extremely helpful guys in many situations now we have tuple t1, t2, t3. How can we access the first element, second element and third element? Standard library has given us function called get for that. So I can say see out get, get the first element which is the zeroth element of tuple tp. Okay. Or not the tuple, the instance of tuple. Let's say t1. Okay get the zeroth element of tuple t1 if i go ahead and run this code you can see it is one okay similarly i can go ahead and do it for second element and third element for the same tuple 0 1 2 and if i go ahead and run this code you can see 1 c 
1.1 which is 1c 1.1 so it's very easy to get the value of the tuple now we can also get it in a variable for example i can say let's say int i equal to get 0 t1 and in here i can print i the end result will be same so it's the same result but what if you want to get all the elements of the tuple in different different variables at one go this is where std tie can be used for okay it's very useful to return individual elements of a tuple from a function using tie here is how we can use tie so let me get rid of this uh, code so let me create three variables i'll say int first okay and care second i'll say float third okay what we can do is that we can say tie okay in here i can pass first second third and i can assign it to a tuple for example let's say t2 so if i go ahead and run the code or let me print it first uh, i'll say first second and third i'll print also and if i go ahead and run this code you can see that 2d 2.2 is printed which corresponds to t2 not only that you can assign it to time while creating a tuple you can say make tuple uh, for example let's say uh, 100 c 100.100 for example this will also work and you can see the end result is we are getting 100 c 100.1 and that's the reason in some of the function you can see that people actually return make tuple which is taken in the type okay so you can return from a function take it as a type as an individual element this is extremely helpful in handling complex data structures unlike objects and classes now when we use type we need to define all the individual elements um, well before we are calling type like int first care second float third if we don't want to do that there is a option to do it in c plus plus 17 onwards called c plus plus 17 structural binding which means that i can just do auto square bracket first second third and i assign it to t3 and if i go ahead and run the code you can see that first second and third will be declared and assigned in here you do not need to specify the type of the variables the number of elements that are there in tuple you just do an auto on it and it is automatically assigned to individual elements how nice it is but this feature is only available from c plus plus 17 onwards now what if we want to change the let's say one element uh, one tuple element well the same get function can do that so what we can do is that over here we can say get let's say 0 of t3 and we make it let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and if you go ahead and run the code you can see that since we have changed the t3 it is changed to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so this is how you use tuples for variables now let's talk about functions so let me get rid of these let me create a tuple with int and a function so i'll say function uh, which returns an int and takes a integer as a parameter of tuple okay so for using this particular function std function you need to include functional header file so in here what we can do is that tp again t1 what we can do is that we can create an integer called 10 and we can create a lambda function for example a lambda which takes an integer and actually returns the int and just say see out lambda uh, 
lamp record and then let's set up something zero okay and that's all okay so this is how we can create a function in tuples using lambda functions so if i want to call that function how will i do that again i'll say get the first of t1 and i'm just calling that function with let's say 100 okay so if i go ahead and run this code you can see that lambda call should be printed and it is you know the good thing about tuples is that you can actually change the lambda function in here instead of calling this or let me copy this i'm just changing it to another lambda function uh, let's say same int well signature will be same signature cannot be changed return type int in c out let me tell another lambda okay and just return some minus one and that's all okay and now if i go ahead and call this particular first element of the lambda it will say another lambda okay so this is how you can uh, use variables as well as functions in tuples not only that uh, you must have heard about something called dispatcher tables or state machines it's very easy to handle those things with tuples for example i can actually create a vector of type tp of v okay and i can actually say v dot pushback and say t1 this code is perfectly fine so for example if this tuple is my state machine and this lambda function is a state transition function we can put state and state transition inside a vector and that too in an easiest possible way without taking care of any shared pointer unique pointer or for that matter any normal pointer so that's the way you can use tuples think about the places where you can use tuples instead of your normal structures and classes your code will end up becoming much better than what it is today and how it looks today so that's all for today video i hope i was able to explain some really interesting aspect of modern c++ and i do believe that you are gonna use that in your day-to-day -day coding thanks a lot people thanks for watching till the next time we meet good day Take care.